Hi guys, here we are. So we're gonna talk today about scholarships. I did not uh, really talk about scholarships before. So what do we do? How do we do to get a scholarship? And also master programs. What does it mean to apply for a master in car design, in transportation design, or innovation design, in industrial design? I would like also to add a last uh, topic which is becoming really of strong actuality, which is the online car design courses, okay? There are uh, several today. They are really, really nice. Some of them very, very good with a very good instructor's team, which are made by real designers. Some of them I know, they are friends. So we will talk about this. Follow me. If you are looking for a scholarship, the easiest thing I would say to do, because I did the same thing, would be just go on Google and Google scholarships. And you cannot Google scholarship simply like that, because if you do that, you will, be, you will get in contact, you get all the information about every scholarship in the world. And that's not what you're looking for. But you are looking for, for scholarships in car design education or in transportation design schools. Then once you do that, you will discover something very interesting. Many design schools, believe me, many, many, and of the most, starting from the most important ones to the less important ones, offer scholarships. So this will be some really good surprise for you. And if you go and check all those links and you click on those links, you will uh, land on their websites on which they will explain you exactly all the rules to respect, all the documents to prepare, to apply. When a school offers a scholarship, it's not for 20 people. It's impossible. This means that there will be a very, very high competition. So you will be one or two people will be probably chosen uh, between many, 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 many people applying for the same scholarship. So two places or one place only available for, um, I would say, 200, 300 portfolios that that school will receive. So what to do? The most important thing is, of course, that you have to prepare yourself. Your portfolio, it becomes the number one element that you have to prepare with a lot of attention. And now I tell you how. What is really expected in this portfolio and how you have to prepare it? Are they waiting for a super professional portfolio or are they waiting just for a series or a collection of your drawings of things you have done until that day and you do not know, of course, what it means to apply for a design school? Follow me. Of course, you are not a design student yet. And you don't know the design professional world, not yet. So when you have to apply for a scholarship, you don't have to think that you must have a super hot professional uh, portfolio. At the same time, you have to make a portfolio, so a collection of all the drawings you have done, if they are related to car design, of course, all the car sketches, the little things you did and you doodle on your own, and if you have color sketches, much better, okay? Everything you learn, maybe following on YouTube uh, tutorials, maybe following some online courses that help you to, uh, to exercise better with somebody that was following you, Anyway, you have to put all this together and you have to send it to the design school or the design schools you selected that are offering a scholarship. Now, when you do that, you have to understand one important thing. The school is offering scholarship for free so that you or who will be selected don't have to pay for the school, but at the same time, to do that, the school will make sure that they will choose with their committee 
okay, that will, will make the choice, the most talented students. So, before you send your portfolio, you can, you can already do a few things. You can compare what you are sketching with what you see online. I can imagine you are in India or in Italy or in another country alone and you cannot go next door and, and try to see what your friends that is a professional designer is doing so that he can show you. You are not in that case. So you are alone on your own. But you have internet. And with internet, you can follow. You can follow tutorials. You can follow other de professional designers here on YouTube or on Instagram or on LinkedIn. And you can see how they do and what they do. And you can follow also other people that are more amateur style like you because they are not professionals. They are just young students or young uh, car design lovers, and you can go and check how they are doing. And you can start comparing. So, how am I performing? Am I better or worse? And if I see my drawings and I see those people like me, for example, like Luciano, that is making sometimes tutorials, how is he doing? And how am I far from what he's doing? Or how am I close to what is he doing? So in terms of design quality, in terms of quality, in terms of sketching quality. So you can already make a, a sort of a consideration about your level if you make this type of resume. Okay? So this is something that you have to do. Now, when you send your uh, collections of drawings for a scholarship, make sure that you have one part, which is your really sketches. Okay? Just sketches, ideations. And please send everything free hand. If you want to show something Photoshop or with another software that is similar to Photoshop, so digital drawing, you can do it, but on the last part, the part three. The first part will be really sketches. Then the second part, you have to try to show few projects, okay? So you have a side view, a front view, a back view, of what you sketched, okay? Let's call them your designs or your design projects. And of course, there will be amateurial stuff, but it's okay. What is important here in this sequence of organization, of organizing your mini portfolio for scholarship is that you show that you have a mindset like a designer, that you know, you understood already how you can prepare your uh, portfolio. So, sketches, projects with several views, and then the last part will be what we call the rendering presentation hot stuff or show off stuff. So, if you have some competencies in making, using color with markers, with pastel, or with digital drawing, then at the very end you should show some of those rendered uh, renderings. The last thing which is very important, it's another small section where you will put everything you know how to do in terms of artistic. So if you know how to draw faces, if you know how to draw, or if you do paintings like uh, those, check. You see, those are some of my paintings. If you take pictures of those, I mean, if you have your own paintings. So take a picture of those and put all the extra artistic stuff that you do on your own to show that you are motivated in design, in car design or product design or graphic design, whatever, but that you have also a sort of an artistic background. That is very important to show how solid it's your convincing, your conviction, your engagement in really wanting to make it to get in that school. Okay, so this is the most important advice I give you about scholarships. Now let's go to number two topics. We will talk about the master, master classes. Master classes, it's exactly, how can I say, a shorter period of, that, of time during which there is a concentration of a full bachelor design program, whether it's in transportation design, in industrial design, in design innovation, whatever. 
A bachelor is between three and four years, in some schools even five, but when you go to a master you have two years or one year, it depends. If you already know how to sketch really well, you might do one year because it's a specialistic type of degree. If your sketching is so-so, many design schools, professional design schools, offer one year to improve your skills, to refresh your skills, and at the same time to prepare you to the last year, which is the most important one, which is really the specialistic year. Why do we need a, a master? Or who should go and attend a master? Now, if we want to know exactly who should go, we can say that anybody could do it. Anybody that is in engineering, in architecture, in design, even a young design uh, uh, designer that would like to make a master because he didn't have the time to do it in school, could be sponsored by his company or her company to go and follow one year of master. In Renault, sometimes we did it. Very rare, but we did it, okay? But a master in design generally is done for those that already know how to use their hands. Because it's not really 100% necessary that you have a master in transportation design in order to become a car designer. A master, it's a plus, okay? It's a specialistic plus. It's a, a sort of a training that uh, goes more over, over the simple fact of becoming a designer. So in those master classes, you should learn how to manage projects, what is the language, the terminology, what is the dynamics in managing, for example. The problem is that when uh, many engineers from abroad, especially from abroad, in the, one of the countries that is doing this a lot, it's India, want to go, wanted to go to have a master because they come from five years of engineering, mechanical engineers, the most cases are mechanical engineers, and they want to have access to a master program because it's their way to become car designers. Then in that case, we might have a problem. You have to understand one thing that is very simple concept. If a student to become a car designer has to study three years, four years, or five years, according to the school he chooses, or she's going to. How can you become a designer in only one year? So this is the first thing you have to ask yourself. So I know that master programs are there, and I know that people will go to master programs, and I think it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that you have to be very careful if you come from an engineering background, and probably you never sketched before, but you have a strong passion for car design, you have to be very careful that you don't believe that you go to a master. You do two years. In one year, you will learn more or less how to sketch better, but you will never be really super professional. Then you go to the second and last year and you learn more about design, transportation, design, project management, project organization, how you make a project, plannings, modeling, sketching, presentations, whatever. You make your model with your team in school and then you have a beautiful sponsor project. I want you to be very careful to understand that an engineer that goes through that, uh, this type of path can call him or herself right away car designer. Because with one year and a half, it's really hard that you can make it like that. Unless you are a very strong talent and because of reasons we do not know, you did not go to a design school five years ago, but you went to an engineering school. But your, or an architecture school, but your talent was such a high talent as an autodidact, a self-made uh, person, okay, that you were able to go th through engineering or architecture, and then when you go to a master, you are okay, in the sense that you feel at home, because you already have a personal level of talent 
that will show you, will give you the opportunity to get the best out of this master, and then, yes, be ready to be a car designer. So, a master, it's something that, of course, you can do. It is something that will give you more information about a specific topic. In this case, we're talking about transportation design. But be careful in thinking that because you've done this type of master, that you are 100% a car designer. Because the two things are not always, don't go always together, okay? To be a car designer, there is only one sure way, which is a bachelor that gives you three, four or five years of intensive studies, during which you will learn all the secrets with many teachers that will tell you and will guide you to push your talent and become a real car designer with a, an internship and also uh, a beautiful uh, and perfect portfolio once you get out. A master, it's the same thing, but completely shrinked in one year and a half or two years. And now let's talk about the last topic, okay? Let's talk about those sexy online transportation design sketching courses. Maybe you remember two years ago, I started making some uh, sketches and give some lessons on sketchdrive.com, beautiful platform, okay? It's all online. And basically I used to give uh, lessons about sketching. I had a class which was called uh, Sketching One and we were going through around the car, starting from the basics, which is a little bit more my specialty, okay? And it was really fun because believe me, I had uh, about 60 people and I was following them one by one. And this is very nice. It's a little bit tiring because of the, the jet lag. Uh, you work a little bit uh, at night, uh, in the evening, but I was very happy to do that. And it, the nice thing was that uh, I could uh, write because there was no video. I think today there are video, video conference style. At that time, we did not have that, but you could uh, write and they could answer you back live. And we were in a virtual room during, in which there were all the, 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 the people, okay, that were attending to that class. Of course, that uh, class was a paying class. Very little money, but people had to pay because that's uh, the online courses, at least the way I know, it's like that. You pay, I don't know, 20 euros or 50 euros, and for a month, you have someone that is following you directly. I find this online courses philosophy and uh, methodology very, very interesting, very, very productive. And I think that if you feel that you are weak and that my tutorials or my colleagues and friends' tutorials are not enough to understand, if you take the option, especially if you are young, you take the option to go to enroll yourself to an online courses and you choose the class you are interested in to get stronger and better and exercise with someone following you person by person, okay, then that's the, the thing you should do because that would be very benefic to you. Today, we have many, several type of uh, uh, online courses. So we have Inc. Academy, which is very nice. And some of the people are teaching there, I know them very well. One of them, I won't tell you who, it's a next teacher of mine when I was teaching at Instituto Europeo de Design in Torino. Very good guy, very good. And the other ones are very good. They go exterior, interior, basics of drawings, renderings, digital drawing. They, do, they cover almost everything and they're all professionals. So you don't, make, you don't have someone that is close to retirement or that comes from the oldest and cannot really help you because it's, uh, you have people that today are real young designers. Okay, I say young because they are younger than me. Okay, so that's a great opportunity for you. Then you have a lunch pod design academy. That one also is very good. That one is in India. Why not? And over there I saw that you have some mentors that sometimes come in and give spe specific lessons. That's very important because you see that you learn from people 
and uh, it's direct. Now, may I consider myself a car designer once I finish one of those uh, online courses? The answer probably is not really. And the reason is very simple. You have to understand that in a company, we have a, an HR department, personal department, that has rules. And those rules say that if you have to become a car designer and you have to be hired as a car designer, at the beginning, you will be hired the same level of an engineer. Now, an engineer made five years school, university, okay? And he has a certain level. So if you get to the same level, you have to have an equivalent type of school with a, 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 an official diploma or an official uh, piece of paper, okay? So your degree. Now, you have to make sure that you have an official recognized governmental degree in your discipline. If you don't have that, I'm sorry. It's like you are missing the most important element to get higher. And in a way, it's normal. Because uh, <laughs> if you want to work, People ask you in your curriculum vitae, please tell me where, uh, what school you did, did you do? So they understand what is the level to enter a job, okay? And then the type of career that you can make. Now, if you don't have that, how can I get, how can you get hired? And the company, how can the company hire you? You will be, in, you will be framed into another uh, how can I say, another group of people that can be hired, but of course in a lower situation because it will look like you don't have a degree. And the most important thing is that if you go to a master, as we said before, you have an official degree that is internationally um, recognized. If you have a bachelor, a bachelor is a bachelor, is an official degree. If you go to an online course, you learn but you cannot say that you have a real degree unless, and this is something that probably I don't know, some of them made a, a sovereign agreement with a local government or a, a, a country government to be recognized. That means that uh, even though they are an online course, they give you a piece of paper that is an official recognized piece of paper in, if, uh, in, uh, for you. Now, in that case, it might work, okay? But be careful, because if you think that one day you would like to make a, a career, then your degree is important. So this is the end of this video. I hope I answered to your questions. I don't know if you liked also this new way that I used to make this video. I try to be more creative. You know, at this time, staying at home during this coronavirus uh, quarantine, I am learning a lot more about how you can improve your videos. I hope you liked it. Write in the comments, share the video, and thank you very much. Bye.